Welcome grade 12 uh, to another session of TIS tutoring. Of course, this is part two of the data handling where we are focusing specifically on the box and whiskers plot. All right, so I would encourage you if you have not seen part one uh, that you watch part one of this video first because obviously this is an extension of that, okay? So in this section, we are looking at uh, your typical exam questions. So the exam questions that you could expect uh, as a grade 12 learner. Let's get into it. All right. So for 1.1, you are given two boxes and whiskers plots, two different classes, class A and class B. And of course, uh, we need to answer the question. Complete the five number summary uh, for class A. So we're only doing the five number summary for class A. If you remember from part one, from part one, you were given the five number summary, the five numbers, and you had to use those five numbers to sketch the box and whiskers plot. That's what we did in the last question of part A. But here you are actually given the box and whiskers plot and you actually have to get uh, the five number summary from the box and whiskers plot. So you basically do the opposite of what you did in part A. All right, so how do you extract uh, the box and whiskers plot uh, or rather the five number summary from the box and whiskers plot, okay? Let's look at that. The first point represents the minimum. The second point represents quadruple one. Uh, Q2 would be the third point, the median. Q3 would be the, third, the fourth point. And the final point represents your maximum. So um, how do you then extract those numbers? Okay, so let's look at the minimum. You, obviously that's the first point. So you would go up to the number line, all right? If you go up to the number line, you'll see that that point is at 70. The second point is Q1. And if you go up the number point, then you'll see that that point is at 73. That's how you get the 73 there. Again, the third point represents Q2. Uh, if you go up to the number line, you'll see that Q2 is at 77. The fourth point represents Q3. And if you go up the number line, um, you will see that uh, Q3 is at 82. And the last point is obviously your maximum. And if you go up the number line, you'll see that the, the maximum is at 85. All right, you could have done the same for class B, but of course this question was only looking for the number summary of class A. All right, so let's move on. Okay. The 1.2, the second part uh, of this question, wants the learner to compare the intercortical ranges of both classes, class A and class B. And as you will remember from part one, the intercortical range is calculated by uh, taking Q3 and subtracting Q1. So it's Q3 less Q1, okay? So let's do that for both classes, starting with class A. All right, so for class A, this is class A. We know that Q3 is over here. So Q3 is 82 and Q1 is over there. So Q1 is 73. So 82 minus 73 gives you nine, okay? Let's do the interquartile range now for class B. Q3 for class B is over there. So Q3 is at 87. And Q1 for class B is over there. So Q1 for class B is at 73. So 87 minus 73 will give you an intercortical range of uh, 14. All right. And we could see that class B, if we are comparing, has a larger quantile ra intercortical range than class A, which means that class B has more values in the intercortical range than uh, class A. All right. So that is how you could compare uh, those values. All right. Okay. Let's move on uh, to the last part of this section. Uh, all right. So 
Here, the learner has been asked to calculate the percentage of learners uh, who scored more than 77%. All right, so before you answer uh, the next two questions, you need to remember one important concept that we are dealing with quartiles. So quartiles, quarters, and a quarter is 25%. So that tells you that each section in the box and whiskers plot represents 25%. So if we look at class A, that section represents 25%. That section represents 25%. That section represents 25%. And that section represents 25%. Okay. Uh, of course, 25, uh, 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25 will give you 100. And uh, the same principle applies uh, to that box and whisker plot there. That section represents 25%, that section represents 25%, that section represents 25%, and the last section represents 25%. Okay, so let's answer the questions. You are being asked to calculate the percentage of learners in class A. So we're looking at class A, who scored more than 77%, okay? So if we look at the scores on the number line, 77% is over there. And if we go down to class A, you'll see that that 77% is uh, at Q2. All right. So basically the question is asking you the percentage of learners who scored more than Q2 because uh, Q2 is at 77% for class A. So that percentage of that learners would be that section and that section. The one who scored more than Q2 or more than 77%. So it would be 25 plus 25, which gives you 50%. All right. And then, of course, uh, we answer 1.4 the same way, but uh, this time for class B. So you calculate the percentage of learners in class B who scored less than 87%. Okay, so that's 87%. And if you go down to the box and whiskers plot, you'll see that 87% is at Q3. All right, so how many of those learners scored less than uh, Q3? So it would be 25 plus 25 plus 25 scored less than 87%. So that would give you 75%. Okay, so thank you learners for tuning in. Uh, again, I ask you to subscribe uh, if you haven't done so already. Till next time, bye.